When you buy a house to get the best possible deal, you want to keep the seller and the agent sweet. You need everyone on your side. In this episode, we're going to talk about the best ways to do that. So get a cup of coffee, get your notebook and relax and we'll go through the process together. Welcome to Langer Property. I'm Richard Edwards. As you may know, I'm in Piemonte, but the principles are the same everywhere in Italy. If you're casually viewing whilst on vacation, that's up to you, but have a think about it first. Put yourself in the position of the agent and the owners. Agents, especially specialist agents, will generally cover large areas. And if you don't buy anything, they don't get paid. They just have costs, and these days that can be substantial. You might buy something eventually, but here are some useful hints. If there's a house you're interested in, maybe ask for even the approximate location or the town. Have a drive around on your own. Decide if you like the area first. Some places you'll go to, you'll dislike immediately. This is all part of your diligent and intelligent research. If you insist on the agent being there, and then you tell them you don't like the area, don't be surprised if they're not impressed with you. And remember, you want them fully on your side because if they're not fully on your side, it can eventually work against you. And keep in mind that in Italy, the owners will nearly always be there, so it's their time too. Or it might be they have to pay someone to open the house for them. If you have another motive for meeting the agent, other than to see houses, you might do better to speak on the phone or at least make it clear why you want to meet. You can be fair and give them the chance to refuse. I provide a consultancy service that is not connected with viewings. By all means, get in touch if you just need good advice. Here's a link on my website in the description below. It's an hourly rated consultancy so you can get professional advice if you're looking to buy a home here in Piemonte. It's the same with asking for professionals to be there, such as architects and builders. Their time is precious. So see the house first, get an idea of whether you like it or what needs to be done first before you insist on entire teams of pros being there. Here's the most important tip when you're viewing a house. Don't tell the owner you love their house and don't look too excited. I know I don't need to explain why. Just be nice and friendly. Don't walk around acting as if you hate it either. And that won't usually work in your favor. I just want to mention my new home presentation videos. There are a few up already and running, so be sure to take a look. I intend to make them as often as I can and feature houses from many different agents. And I'll only feature houses I've seen myself. So by all means, take a look at those. We'll put some links up here, but also there are links down in the description to those videos. And also it's really helpful if you click the subscribe button. I'd love you to do that. Only if you really want to, okay? But click the like and subscribe and that will really tell me that you do want these videos. Okay, back to viewing etiquette. Try not to change appointments. If you want to see several houses, it can be a challenge to organize. The agent doesn't know how long you'll need to see a house. If you love it, it might take longer, so it's difficult to get the timing right. Be patient with the agent and follow their guidance. You can always ask for another visit to the house or the houses you like. They'll be happy to do that. Italian people are generally very hospitable. It is better not to refuse them and you'll learn something along the way. If they offer you a cup of coffee, I'd take it. It really helps. If they offer you wine, it's up to you, but the Italian police have no sense of humour if you're caught driving over the limits. It's good to visit houses with a clear mind and it's better not to offend the owners. I've had good relationships with owners ruined because a client was inebriated whilst viewing the house. Italians are emotional people, this is not a myth. Your friendliness on the first visit can really make a difference when it comes to negotiating if you decide you want to buy their house. Now, why is it that often the agent doesn't share the exact location of a house? I know that agents often get emails saying things like, can you give me the exact location of this house? Well, firstly, it might be because of security. If a presentation shows every room in the house with expensive furniture and other things, it might not be wise to tell the entire world where it is. Secondly, in Italy, the seller can sign up for an exclusive contract with an agent or a non-exclusive contract. An exclusive contract is usually for one year. The house can only be sold through that agent by that agent. If the agent hasn't sold the house within the contract period, the owner has to decide if he wants to continue with the agent. If the agent doesn't have an exclusive contract, he won't want other agents to know exactly where the house is and won't share it with anyone maybe not even you. 
In this situation, you're doing well if you get the exact location. Assure the agent you're not up to something and aren't an international criminal. Be nice when you write to the agent. I really appreciate being written to with good humour and in a relaxed way. Maybe that's just me, but I don't think so. As I mentioned in the previous video, think about how you write to the agent. Avoid the long stories and get to the point. It will help you and the agent. You see a house. You're tempted to go back and discover if the owner signed an exclusive contract. Cut him or her out of the deal and you're 3 to 4% better off, right? Wrong. You need that person on your side. You need them fighting in your corner. If the owner thinks you're so willing to ignore the agent, they might well see you as an opportunity and you've lost the one who could best negotiate for you and guide you through the process. The agent worked hard in one way or another and that could be easy to disregard. This type of action is counterproductive. In the long run, there's a very good chance it could cost you more if you don't have someone on your side. I can tell you some horror stories of people who did exactly that and bought into a whole lot of expensive problems. The agent gets paid a commission from the buyer and the seller, so it might seem obvious they want to keep the price high. I've found that never to be true. They want the sale for whatever price. Now, what about when it comes to negotiating the price? It's an art that not many study, so you want a capable agent. You don't want someone that's pretending to be an agent, someone that's not even registered for tax. You might need to offer help if you possess better skills than them, but you should be able to negotiate a lot off the sale price. It will depend on whether the house has a reasonable listing price and what the demand is. Also, like everywhere else, owners who are selling can live in cuckoo land when it comes to valuing their property. There are a number of different reasons they could be way off on their price. They see other houses for sale and they compare. Now this is a problem as the houses they make comparisons with could be overpriced. Or it might be that they have an unrealistic view of their own property. In some ancient languages, Hebrew for example, the word family and house are the same. The house is part of the family. They're not selling a house, they're selling a part of their family. Now, I'm not sure of the Italian origins of the words of casa and familia, but for sure it can be the mentality. They might think it's worth much more, but it might not be. Emotions could be involved. They see you coming. All foreigners are rich and they might even ask for a higher price than the asking price. Do you know what? I was just writing this line when a Swiss lady called me and said this is exactly what happened to her. So how do we negotiate with someone living in cuckoo land? Learn the language? No. We need to hit them right between the eyes with facts. Bring them down from that dreamlike state into reality. Now they won't like it. They'll squirm and curse. But if they have an ounce of reasonableness in their bones, they'll back down and take the offer. If they're not reasonable, it might be better to walk away. It can take years to convince someone that their house is not worth their asking price. The offer has to be very carefully prepared and you need to look for what the FBI calls black swans. Now this expression was once used to describe something that didn't exist until one day somebody stumbled across black swans in Australia. So we're looking for the seemingly impossible, the hidden reasons. I've heard many experiences of how this can work and work well. Stubbornness can be overcome with a little work and determination. If you're not working with a smart agent, you'll have to help them. Okay, the price isn't so unreasonable, but you want a deal. You need to know their lowest price. How do you do this? Get the facts. Find the black swans. They are there. It could be that they're buying another house and they need to sell fast. Offer them the solution. That you'll sign quickly, pay a deposit and close the sale as soon as possible. This can save you a stack of money. They've inherited the house and there are several owners. One million euros between six people, it's not so much. They're elderly and can no longer look after a large house, garden and land. The children have left home and the house is too big. One we had recently, the owner was in very poor health with no family, just a distant cousin. If the cousin inherited the property, he'd have to pay around 200,000 euros in inheritance taxes, and he was broke. Finding this out was crucial in getting the asking price down by more than half, which incidentally was the correct asking price. 
They need a solution and you are the solution to their problem. You have to find out what they need to resolve their issue. It can seem impossible, but I promise you it isn't. Relax, take a bit of time and keep communications open. You need information. And don't listen to, well, I just spent this on it. Sorry, but we all did and the economy is not so great, so we can't always get our money back. They need to realize this and you can help them. Give them an example of a house you just sold or something similar. Also point out that the situation could get worse. The house will devalue and it will need work, etc. Or just buy it for goodness sake. It's great. It's what you want. The owner's not being ridiculous about the price and you can afford it. Why not just buy it? Someone else will and you lose it. If it's just a game of negotiations and pride, it can get a little bit frustrating for everyone. So see good for your hard work and make everybody happy, especially you. Do foreigners pay more for houses? Well, the answer is usually yes, kind of. Someone sent me an interesting price stat this week. It was a valuation from a big property website that calculated how much houses sell for per square meter in all of Italy. Honestly, I think this might explain the difference in areas, but overall is useless information. A Ferrari 328 GTS weighs about 1,200 kilograms. A Fiat Panda weighs about the same. One costs 3,000 euros and the other costs about 100,000 euros. Cars can't be valued by how much they weigh and houses can't be valued by how big they are. Everyone wants the views, no neighbours, the vineyards, the pool, whatever. If it's the one everybody wants and people are willing to pay the extra over a house without a view, without a pool and has close neighbours, it's worth more. You get the point, right? Foreigners pay more because they want the house that every other foreigner wants. It's rare and it's very desirable. You don't have to go down this route, but be prepared to make compromises. I was going to divide this guide up into 10 parts, but I've decided to just get on with it. The next video will be the last one of this series and will be about getting the house checked, asking should you restore a house, do you need a lawyer, and how the final deed is done. And I'll be releasing my PDF and EPUB Home Buyer's Guide. That will be in the next video of this series, so subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it's been useful. And be sure to watch my HPVs. These are home presentation videos of houses for sale here in Piemonte. Links down below. I'll be making a lot more videos, so watch this space. Click like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Bye for now.